So what I want to do now is um, review the stereochemical uh, implications of electrocyclization reactions. And so this had to do with our little table that said like con dis, dis con uh, from organic chemistry too. So getting into it, stereochemistry of electro, and it's really, even though it, I guess it could correspond to both. Well, no, no, it's, it's helpful for electrocyclic ring closing and opening reactions because in opening reactions, it'll allow us to um, look at the stereochemistry on the alkene uh, products. We, we don't do it too often that way, but it'll allow us to determine if we have a, an E or a Z alkene um, at the end of a ring opening reaction. So this is where we needed to recall our table where we had um, con, dis, dis, con. And if we think about the labels for our table, it was even and odd, then delta and H nu or heat and light. Okay, so now how do we use this? Well, what we look at is we use even and odd to represent the number of pi bonds in our um, reaction. So if you recall, we can have heat or light do this reaction. So this is an electrocyclic ring closure and it's six pi. Now what's interesting is we have the opportunity to form two stereocenters. And what we can do is use our table to predict the outcome of the reaction if we have heat or light present. So let's look specifically at the case of heat. We'll keep our table in view for this. Now, if you recall, what we wanna do is we wanna let our fists be the edge of our pi system. We're gonna have thumbs at each of those fists. So in this case, both of my thumbs are sticking out. Okay, so they're sticking out of the ring as opposed to in or in and out. They're both out. Now, what we're going to do is apply heat to the reaction. Whoops, let's get my black ink. Okay, so we're going to do heat. Now, when we look at even and odd, there's a few ways to think about this. Um, what I like to do is just count the double bonds. So there are three double bonds. Three pi bonds, so odd. Now with heat and odd, we're going to go disrotatory, which means if I rotate one, one direction, either counterclockwise or clockwise, and I can't remember how Zoom mirror images this or not. So um, I'm gonna go this way with my, what's my left thumb and this way with my right thumb. So they're moving in opposite directions, but they end up on the same side of the ring. And so they are cis to each other. Now, just as in the case of any pericyclic reaction, it doesn't have some sort of chirality inducing agent, we're going to get both enantiomers. Now, in this case, this is an achiral molecule due to a plane of symmetry. So we form this as our product and not the diastereomer. How would we form the diastereomer, which I'll consider as one enantiomer where we have wedge and dash, we could flip that around. The two are not superimposable on each other, so they are mirror images. Well, um, or they are mirror image, um, mirror images that are not the same, so they are enantiomers of each other. Okay, so if we draw our same molecule now with light, now what I should have done up above is written dis up here. Now we're still odd, we still have three pi bonds, so we're odd, but now we're under light. Zooming out, light and odd is con. It's always the opposite. So now if we have both of our thumbs sticking out, if we move one this way, we have to move one the other way. This is where I break my wrist, right? So I'm now going up and down. It could be either orientation. We could go this way to get the other enantiomer. So that's going to give us um, the structure I had drawn second. So formed with light. Okay, formed with heat. Okay, so now what did con and dis stand for? That's that's worth reviewing. So con was 
con-rotatory or with rotation. That is, they're working together, rotating together, rotating in the same direction, whereas dis stood for disrotatory, moving in opposite directions. Whereas even and odd are the number of double bonds. Okay, there's a great section about this. Um, again, this is uh, actually review from organic chemistry too from my, my class, but um, there's a great section on this in the book if you're pretty rusty on it. But what I wanna show you is um, I'll have you turn to a page in the book that's um, I think everybody's favorite when it comes to this book and I haven't seen the new edition. So hopefully they keep the same cover, but um, or excuse me, the same cover. I just ruined the punchline. Okay, my favorite page is the cover of the book, goodness. Okay, <laughs> anyway, so the cover illustration is a series of excellent pericyclic reactions that give rise to an important natural product. So we have N-deandric acid synthesis. And this isn't just the synthesis, this is the biosynthesis. So N-deandric acid is a natural product. It's a secondary metabolite, not required for growth, um, growth, reproduction, transmission of genes directly and that sort of thing. So, you know, it's not like DNA, RNA, that sort of thing. It's just a molecule that can provide some sort of selective advantage um, in the environment. Now, endiandric acid has a really complicated structure, and we'll get there at the end. So we're going to start with a biosynthetic starting point that has a fairly complicated structure. Now, again, if you want to see this, it's just a cover illustration of your book because it's so much fun. So I, I think I need to have some diagonals that'll get me into an eight membered ring. So there's a few ways you could do this. You could have your eight, well, you're forming eight membered ring with alternating double bonds, single bonds and double bonds next to a diene system. And this goes down to CO2R. Okay, so again, this is produced by numerous um, enzymes. And then the enzyme, enzymes can release this um, from some sort of way. It doesn't require like a super organized um, enzyme active site if it requires the active site at all to uh, promote the next reaction. So what we're going to do is just apply some heat to this reaction and we'll watch a reaction occur. In particular, we're going to see an eight pi electrocyclic ring closing reaction. That is eight pi because we use four double bonds. So this is heat, four pi bonds. This is even, this is con, right? So we have con. Now what you wanna do is we wanna do the thumb trick where we now have either out or in or that sort of thing. Um, but we wanna go to the edge of the pi system. So the edge of the pi system is going to be right here. Now, both of these alkenes are E, which means they're both kind of sitting out like this. So if we go con, we're going to get to a trans geometry. Now I'm gonna draw, now to, to do this, first of all, let's draw the stop sign. I always take a minute. Better professor wouldn't be talking while you all were struggling to draw an eight member ring. It's all right, let me know in my evals. Okay, anyway, now we're going to have a trans relationship of the groups that are attached to the, form, the now formed eight membered ring where the dash went up to a, an alkene that was in conjugation with an ester. And this thing went to the, this goes right to the double bond that is E next to an E double bond again. Okay, now the cool thing about eight pi electrocyclizations is they can be followed immediately by a six pi electrocyclization where we go here to here to here. Now, when you do that, you're going to connect this atom and this atom together to give a six four ring system. Now we're still under heat. We're not doing like a complex photo reaction. Now this time we have three pi bonds because one of them was lost before. So now we're at dis. Okay, so we're at disrotatory. Now what does the disrotatory product look like? 
Well, actually, both of our alkenes that are at the edge of our pi system that I show in red are, um, did I label this right? Yeah, E and E, but I didn't label the current one, right? That's Z. Excuse me, let me focus on this. Z and Z. Okay, they're both Z. So we can take our thumbs and stick them both inwards now. If we take our thumbs and stick them both inwards and we do a disrotatory rotation, we can now stick them both up relative to each other. And so if we do that, we could go up and up, and then this is going to go to a wedge. So a wedge to a wedge, and then a wedge to a dash. This is going to go over here. All right, this one's always, this is the one that always gets me. Um, oh, it just goes right into it. Like I always wanna add a carbon right there. Okay, so now we've got this double bond here and here. We've got H and H pointing down. Okay, so we followed our six, our eight pi electrocyclization reaction with a six pi electrocyclization reaction. Let's label that. So eight pi electrocyclic ring closing and six pi electrocyclic ring closing. Okay, now at this point, after these electrocyclization reactions, we're actually prepared for a Diels Alder reaction. And did I do this right? Oh my gosh, that's so I think I, I think I should have the double bond this way. I'm gonna redraw it. Yeah, this should be E. Shoot. Yeah, right here. Just screw this up. And this should be, um, I'm just going to go like this. There we go. Okay, so I redrew that. And now what I want to do. This should be E. How do I fix that? I think I just go. Ooh, that's frustrating. Um, I'm just going to leave it as an error. Okay. I fixed it down below. I just don't want to. Well, okay. I'll redraw it again. All right. So I have to go. I'm just going to go like this. Now we're E. And I've overlapped with my letter E and it's super sloppy and unprofessional. Okay. We're continuing onward though. All right, but at least we're E and we're E. Now that's important because what we have to do now in this final product is do a Diels Alder reaction between this diene and this dienophile. And we can actually reach over there and let those two things interact. But what I'm going to do is instead of redrawing this again, I'm gonna go right to the product. So I'm gonna show a bond forming between those two carbon atoms, push that pi bond over there and push this up here. And now things get um, a little bit easier because what I'm, gonna, what I'm going to do is draw a six membered ring. And this is my new six membered cyclohexene structure that was just formed and it is fused to another six-membered ring, and that was part of the 6-4 system. Now, when we did this, we are going to form the endo product, which is going to put our hydrogens up. So my point is, this is my Diels-Alder bond. I don't want to draw, I don't want to label there. I'm going to label up here. So this is my Diels Alder new bonds. Okay, now we have things attached to our cyclohexene that we have to consider. 
So the phenyl group needs to come down because the hydrogen is up in our typical stereochemical model. And then the hydrogen is up here based on the geometry that we had. And now what we have is a five membered ring connecting these two structures together. And this is our wedge to our wedge. And this is our wedge that's connected to a four membered ring that's connected to a dash that goes to our CO2R. And then there's our last double bond. And now we have our endiandric acids. Again, if you couldn't capture all this, it's on the cover of your book probably. But we do the endo product here and we establish, let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stereocenters from something that had no stereocenters. So we form both enantiomers of this, but I believe we are selective for um, mostly one diastereomer. But this is a natural product. And this is the biosynthetic route that, it, that the organism takes to get to this natural product that again provides some sort of selective advantage in nature, um, you know, against the force of stopping it from doing its, living its best life. Um, but there's no specialized enzymes here seemingly. This can all happen in a test tube and has happened in a test tube. So I believe it was Casey Nicolau that first prepared the biosynthetic precursor, which was this alkene that I say is produced by enzymes. He prepared that, put it in a test tube, heated it up and watched it traverse this biosynthetic cascade towards the final uh, product using a series of pericyclic reactions. Again, no difference and no electrostatic, um, you know, no, no uh, dramatic differences in electrostatics, no um, dipoles present, no electronegativity, no, uh, you know, reasonably helpful resonance structures to get you there. It's all the overlap of pi orbitals by way of pericyclic reactions ultimately gives rise to this complex sigma bonding network produced um, with biological activity. So it's one of these, it's a great way to finish this unit. Sorry if you had to redraw your structures a little bit. I should always practice this before I, <laughs> as opposed to just picking it up uh, two years since the last time I lectured on it. But um, yeah, so this is just such a really dramatic uh, example of how nature can use pericyclic reactions to develop um, the uh, to develop something so structurally complex, but also biologically active is really rare. So hopefully you enjoyed this at the very least, and that'll do it for this week's set of lectures.